بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علیہ سیدنا محمد و آلہ طیبین الطاہرین Welcome to another episode of the Heroes of Karbala. We have been discussing various the lives and the times and the lessons from the companions of Imam Hussain alayhi afdal salatu wa salam. We mentioned previously that there are various different people who join Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam in the battle of Karbala but the common denominator the common factor between all of those people who join Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam at Karbala is their unwavering unflinching loyalty towards the Imam alayhi salam and towards the religion of Islam and this comes even though they're from different backgrounds, different families, different places, so on and so forth. One of the most notable amongst the companions of Imam Hussain on the day of Ashura is Abis ibn Abi Shabib Shakiri. He's from the Banu Shakir tribe which are from Hamadan and his tribe are known for their loyalty towards Ahlul Bayt It's narrated about th- this tribe of Banu Shakir that in the battle of Siffin Imam Amirul Mu'minin said that if the number of people from Banu Shakir had reached 1000 then the right of God for worshipping would be achieved. That this was their level that Imam Amirul Mu'min considered them to be such great ambassadors for the religion of Islam. In the Battle of Siffin, Abis ibn Shabib, Abis ibn Abi Shabib was injured uh, on his forehead, and this mark of his injury remained until he was killed. Not only was he valiant, not only was he brave in the battlefield but he was also known as an Abid, a Zahid, someone who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the night and he was outstanding as an orator and a speaker as well. When Muslim ibn Aqil came to Kufa he went to the house of Muhtar al-Thaqafi. This of course was very tactical from Muslim ibn Aqil. Why? Muhtar al-Thaqafi was the son-in-law of Nu'man ibn Bashir who was the governor of Kufa at the time. And therefore, Musib ibn Aqil came to the house of Muhtar al-Thaqafi in order to make sure that he was protected. Of course, the governor is not going to attack the house of his own daughter. When the Shia of amongst the, the Shia amongst them in the city of Kufa were informed about the entrance of Muslim ibn Aqil, Safir Imam Hussain alayhi salatu salam. Then they gathered in the house of Muhtar to meet him. In this gathering, Muslim ibn Aqil read the letter of Imam Hussain alayhi salam to them. The first person to stand up and say that he was with Imam Hussain alayhi salam after reading this letter was Habib ibn Mudahir. And the second person was Abis ibn Shabib Shakiri. After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addressed Muslim ibn Aqil and said, I do not give news of about the people and I don't know about their intentions and I don't give promises on their behalf. But by Allah, I swear that I speak about what I have decided. When you call, I will answer and I will fight the enemy and defend you with my sword until I go to God and I do not want anything from it other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised as reward. These two people, Habib ibn Madahir and Abis ibn Abi Shabib Shakiri, when they give their support as prominent people in the city of Kufa, leaders of their tribes, 
and it gives the ground for people to pledge allegiance and then people up to 18,000 is mentioned in some of the narrations come and give allegiance to Muslim Ibn Aqil on the hand of Muslim Ibn Aqil for Imam Hussein over 18,000 people after having pledged their allegiance Muslim Ibn Aqil now writes a letter towards Imam Hussein alayhi salam, telling him of, of the situation in Kufa. When he wants to send this letter to Imam Hussein alayhi salatu salam, he selects Abiz ibn Abi Shabib al-Shakiri along with Shodab ibn Abdullah who is also one of the people from the Shakiri tribe. Incorrectly, some people have written that Shodab was the slave or the client of Abis, but this is not correct. Rather, Shodab was also a prominent member of the tribe of Bani Shakir. And they, these two, they bring the letter of Imam Hussein of Muslim to Imam Hussein from Kufa to Mecca where Imam Hussein is. Shodab ibn Abdullah is mentioned as a Hafiz of Hadith. We mentioned before that Hafiz of Hadith in the Istilah of Hadith in the in Ilm al Hadith means a person who has memorized 100,000 Ahadith. And he used to teach Hadith, the knowledge of Hadith, to the people. He had participated in Jamal and Safin and Naharwan alongside Imam Amir al Mu'min and to Consider the status of Shodab is that Muhaddith Nuri considers Shodab to be greater in father and ilm and knowledge than even Abis ibn Abi Shabib Shakir. On the day of Ashura, Abis says to Shodab that what are your intentions today? What are you deciding to do today? Shodab says that. I don't desire anything today other than to die defending the son of Rasulullah. Abis says that yes, I didn't expect anything less from you than that. I want, I knew that you, due to your knowledge and courage and loyalty towards Ahlul Bayt salam, would give this reply. Shodab goes first and he's killed. First he's made shaheed. Then Abis comes to Imam Hussain When Abis comes to Imam Hussain he says, I swear by Allah that there is nothing or no one in this world who is more honorable or worthy of respect than you. And if it was possible for me to sacrifice everything in this world in order to save your life, then I would have done that. I bear witness that I am on the religion that has been preached by you and your father. So please give me permission to go to the battlefield. Imam Hussain salam gives him permission to go to the battlefield. He goes into the battlefield and he calls out to the enemy and says to them, come and fight me. Rabi ibn Tamim, who had seen his bravery in the battle of Sifin calls out to the enemy from the army of Omar ibn Sa'd. He calls out to the enemy and he says to him that this is the lion, son of a lion, Ibn Shabib. Don't go in front of him, otherwise you'll be finished. Many recognize him from the battle of Sifin and therefore they don't come out in front of him. When nobody comes out, in order to challenge him, Umar ibn Sa'ad rebukes his enemy severely and he says to them, he accuses them of being coward. He says, you're cowardly. This person has come to fight and none of you wants to go and fight him. And then he orders that if you don't want to go near him, if you don't want to fight him, if you think you can't fight him, then shower him with arrows. Fire arrows at him. So they start to fire arrows at him. When he sees this, he throws off his coat of armor and he throws off his shield and his headgear, everything he throws it off and then he starts to directly attack, go into the enemy and attack them one by one. 
He kept on attacking like a lion attacks a pack of foxes until he is drowned by all the stones that have been thrown at him and the arrows that have fired at him. And then he fell off his horse and his head was cut off. Rabi ibn Tamim, the one who had warned people against fighting him, says, By God, I swear that I saw him injured and killed more than 200 people, but finally they besieged him and beheaded him. I witnessed that the head of Abis ibn Abi Shabib was being handed to one to each other and they argued, similar to Nafi as we mentioned, they argued amongst themselves as to who had killed him. Until Umar ibn Sa'ad said, Do not argue with each other. By Allah, I swear that it was not possible for one person to have killed this person, to have killed this man. If we want to examine his high status and we want to know the value that Abbas ibn Abi Shabib al Shakiri has towards our A'imma, we should see that in two of the ziyarat, in the ziyarat of Rajabiya and the ziyarat Nahi al Muqaddasa, Imam alayhi salatu wasalam mentions Abis ibn Shabib, Abi Shabib al Shakiri by name and says, Assalamu alayka ya Abis ibn Abi Shabib Shakiri. And this highlights to us the importance of him and the importance that the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam attaches to such an individual. This is for us to reflect over that if a person attaches themselves with the Imam alayhi salam, then the Imam would make him immortal and make him be remembered forever. So whosoever desires to be remembered forever has to attach themselves in complete submission and obedience to the Imam of the time and Imam alayhi salatu salam will make that individual and that person immortal. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين